Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Grand Canyon National Park. Here, the Colorado River has carved a gorge more than a mile deep, in some places up to 18 miles wide, and exposing rocks almost 2 billion years old. That's nearly half the age of the planet. So what can we learn about Earth's history from one of the continent's most iconic landscapes? Let's find out today on Outsider Classroom. <music> Just like ogres, onions, and parfaits, the earth has layers. These layers are formed over millions of years as sediments like mud or sand are deposited and slowly become rock after a lot of time, heat, and pressure. But unlike ogres, onions, and parfaits, the earth's layers tell a story. And just like any good book, once you learn how to read those layers, you can be transported to another world. You can learn what the earth was like millions of years ago just by looking at the rocks. So, how do you learn how to read rocks? Let's start with four simple rules. Rule number one, younger layers are on top of older layers. This makes a lot of sense. If you were to say, make a sandwich, you'd start with some bread, then put some mustard on, then some cheese, maybe a tomato or some deli meat or whatever else you want on your sandwich, then your top layer of bread. The first layer of your sandwich would be at the bottom with the most recent layer being at the top. Rocks are the same way. Oldest layer is at the bottom with younger and younger rocks as you move up the geologic column. This layer, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. Scientists call this the law of superposition, which is really just a fancy way of saying oldest on the bottom, youngest on the top. This rule is really useful because you can tell how old something is based on where it is in a rock column. Then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. If you were to take a hike into Grand Canyon, the youngest layers of rock would be at the top, then you'd gradually walk back in time until you got to the bottom of the canyon where you'd find the oldest rock layers, nearly two billion years old. Crazy. For rules two and three, let's check in with paleontologist Gabe Santos. This layer, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. Thanks, Chris. The next law is the law of original horizontality. In geology, we look at rocks like layers through time. At the very bottom, you have the oldest layers, and all the layers on top are much younger. Each of these layers was deposited flat because as new rocks and sediment are brought in, gravity causes them to lay one right on top of another. Think of it as like making a sandwich. And each of those layers are placed on the countertop flat. And if you pick it up, you can kind of change its shape. That's kind of how layers work in geology. There are forces in the earth that can cause all these layers to change shape. Sometimes forces might cause them to bend into a U shape. Sometimes forces can cause layers to uplift and change. They can get them to scrunch. And in very rare cases, sometimes layers can be completely flipped. So the next law is the law of cross-cutting relationships. What this means is that all of the rock layers are older than anything that happens to them. So let's think about our sandwich again. You've got your sandwich made on your countertop, and it must be made before you can cut it, before you can add something to it, or pull anything out. So in geology, when we look at our layers, you've got things like faults and fractures, cracks that run through all the different layers. You've got intrusions, brand new layers of rock that come in and replace or break through other layers. You've even got unconformities, where whole layers are missing or eroded. So again, cross-cutting relationships means that all of these rock layers are older than anything that changes or disturbs them. There's one more law that helps us understand how rock layers tell us about Earth's history, and the Grand Canyon is a great example. Rule number four says that rock layers are continuous in all directions. That means the same rocks on either side of the canyon would have been formed 
at the same time by the same source. This limestone here on the south rim and the limestone at the same level on the north rim were formed by the same ancient sea 250 million years ago. Think about it. If you cut a sandwich in half, one side doesn't rearrange itself, the layers are still in the same pattern. Scientists call this the law of lateral continuity. And it's really helpful because the Earth's surface tends to change a lot. Understanding how rock layers work is really important because it can give geologists and you evidence for what the Earth was like millions of years ago. You can learn how old rocks and fossils are, what the environment was like, the climate, even what species were around. You really can travel through time just by remembering four simple rules. Superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting relationships, and lateral continuity. See if you can use these rules to learn about the rocks near you. You never know what you can learn about the planet in your own backyard. Then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.